The Chinese economy, the US economy, the Indian and Southeast Asian economies um, are ones which we have to engage in consistently for the long term, including, of course, Europe and the other regions. They'll go through ups and downs, and we must never be short-term players in these major economies. Uh, we've got to stay engaged, take a long-term view on our investments. Uh, China is going through a very complex uh, set of challenges, part of them partly cyclical, partly structural. Uh, I keep telling my colleagues internationally, never underestimate the complexity of the challenges that China faces. They are more complex than that faced by any other major economy. Um, and even with the best of technocratic abilities, which they have, uh, it requires a constant balancing constant facing up to the trade-offs and making careful judgments. Uh, I think China will get past uh, this period of uh, slowdown. Um, it has the capabilities, certainly, in its, um, in its government to shape policies to get past it, but it may take some time. I think there's great risk in de-risking as it is currently formulated. First, it takes a too short-term view of China's rise. It assumes that the immediate effectiveness of those measures um, is what matters. Uh, you have to play a long game. Uh, China will eventually develop its capabilities. Um, and it will do it on its own, as well as through a complex and interdependent global market economy, where there'll be many players, some of whom are traditionally viewed as friends of the US, some of whom may be not such close friends of the US, who will be part of that engagement with China. But China will develop its own capabilities eventually. And one has to take a long view. Secondly, even the decoupling that appears to be taking the place so far, reduced trade between China and the US, for instance, reduced investments, is, um, is a little bit of a mirage, because a large part of what's happening is a diversion of Chinese exports to third countries which are now benefiting uh, as new manufacturing centers especially, and they're then exporting to the United States. It's just become a more diversified set of supply chains, but China is still there at its core. And rightly so, because it is an extremely competitive manufacturing base for the world. One needs a long-term view. What long-term relationship does one want between these two major powers, China and the US? Is it a relationship of interdependence with certain very carefully prescribed constraints on that inter interdependence? Or is it a relationship of gradually cascading separation, which isn't going to stop China from rising, but will lead to a much more antagonistic relationship in the long term? Thirdly, I don't think either China or the US can count with any assuredness on who their economic allies are going to be in the long term. I think the US in particular has to think hard about that. Uh, most of Asia isn't going to decide that they'll walk away from China, trade and investment-wise. Most of Asia is not going to make that decision. The fundamental problem, however, is not in strategic calculations in the United States. The fundamental problem is in domestic politics. Um, there's very little incentive for either Republicans or Democrats today, including centrist Republicans and Democrats, to say, let's put a halt to this escalation of uh, economic warfare, and let's roll it back. So democracy, as it's now evolving in the US, is 
not conjoining with the strategic interests of the US very well. And it requires leadership on the part of both the parties and, of course, whoever is going to be in the administration in the next four, eight, 12 years to take a long view and to find ways of building consensus.